gonna be a complicated video. I don't have a macro lens. Y'all are not gonna be able to see what's in here. At least, probably not. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It is very, very early in the morning. I have some beneficial bugs, some predators that I wanted to get released into the growth space. Figured I'd bring everybody along just so that it's, well, so it's documented really so I can reference back to it in future videos if people wanted to know what that's all about. Should I reference it in a vlog or something of that matter? A few weeks ago, I talked about how there are some signs of some mealybugs out here, or not mealybugs, there are always a few mealybugs, but some um, spider mites. Spider mites, not a ton. Thought the infestation was worse than it was. Turned out that a lot of it was just greenhouse dander from my heater. That's a long story. You gotta watch that video if you wanna know what I'm talking about. But there are still some spider mites. It's just the beginning of that problem. And since in the very beginning stages of the spider mites, this is the appropriate time if you wanna use beneficials to jump right into it. So that's what I'm doing here. They just showed up maybe a week or two ago and uh, I have been spraying with soaps since then, just spot spraying where I'm seeing them. I came through uh, last night or the night before. I knew the package was coming with these predator mites in here. I should probably talk about that. Okay, the so predator mites. I'll get back to the other point soon enough. Can you tell I came prepared or that I'm really not into filming videos at the crack of dawn? Like 515 outside. So what I have here are the special blend spider mites. These are from Nature's Good Guys. There are some pretty good sources to order your beneficials from. I chose one, at least for the purpose of filming the video, a vendor that also sells on Amazon. That way it's a company that more people can more easily access. People seem to prefer when things are sold on Amazon. So they sent this pamphlet here that has great information about all the different beneficials, ladybugs, fly exterminators, lace wings, caterpillar moth control, they break it down in different ways. Good information here on the nematodes. I really like that there's a nematode chart because different nematodes are good for different purposes. So that's a good breakdown. Praying mantis, they have things help with fungus gnats, thrips, lots of great stuff. Right now my focus is on spider mites as I've been saying and mealybugs just because like I said, there are a few out here, not a ton but enough that it's best to be proactive with that since I'm doing the beneficial thing. I'm not going to be able to use sprays from this point on. May as well go full blown. I'm also going to do nematodes here fairly soon for fungus gnats. Predator mites. There are different types of predator mites. They give a great list in here. I'm not going to go through all of them because it would take a very, very, very long time. You can go to their website, Nature's Good Guys. You can really also just Google predator mites, spider mite control, predator mites, two spotted spider mite, predator, that sort of thing. And most websites have a breakdown of what the different types of predator mites will do, which kind is best to go with. Personally, I like the Californicus largely just because they have a better temperature tolerance for high temperatures. And they're supposed to be good or better than some of the others going long-term without food, meaning that if there's a lull between spider mites for them to eat, they aren't just gonna immediately drop dead and starve to death. They'll survive for a little while maybe while there's an egg hatch out with the mites that they need to eat going on. And there are some others that are good, like the Swarovski right here, Swarovski eyes. Those are supposed to be better for uh, having a faster reproduction rate. So maybe if you have a really bad infestation, that might be the way to go for you. I went with the blend. It's just like a predator mite salad. It's got a little bit of everything in here. Got a bottle here of 5,000, one of 2,000. They need to be released bi-weekly. So every other week I will need to be releasing these until several weeks have passed where I'm not seeing any more spider mites. These arrived here in an insulated envelope with some of those fun water-soluble packing peanuts and there's an ice pack in here. It's a cooler time of year which is generally a, the best time to order these I'm thinking because looking at the reviews seems like there were plenty of people who were having issues with these arriving dead to them during the summer when it was really really hot outside. So it might be best to try and get them shipped in a window when things aren't terribly warm outside. Okay, so there's all the background on all of those. Oh, and there's also a satchel here with prefed ladybugs that will get released. The releasing instructions, pretty much the same for both of them. So very early in the morning or at nighttime, dusk or dawn, everything needs to be wiped clean of any sprays or oils, which brings me back to the thing I started to talk about earlier. I went through prior 
to receiving these and gave everything in here a very heavy spray and a wipe down to get any residues off the plants that could be harmful to these beneficial insects here. I, nothing should have been very harmful because it's mostly just been soaps that I've been using, but still best to get those residues off of everything just to be safe. I would like to think that if I'm using a more organic liquid type pest control that I can spray on things, that if it were going to hurt the predators, then in theory that would mean it would have a long-term effect and also kill the regular spider mites that I don't want out here, yet it doesn't because it needs to be on con Whatever, not gonna go down that rabbit hole. All right, and then to get these released, need to, I'll go ahead and turn the lights off. I had them on really just for the filming. Humidifier turned itself on because the humidity dropped in here. That shouldn't hurt anything. That's only going to help. Then go through and lightly spray down the surface of the plants, which I don't know if I really need to do that. But the humidifiers, running full blast right now the morning dew is still on the leaves of everything out here but if you're growing things in your house and not in an area like this perhaps your plants are putting out of morning dew they're probably not so you need to spray down the surface and then there are various ways you can release these from their jar i have when i've done this in the past i just sprinkled them onto the surface of wherever the problem was i just removed the lid and then on that dampened surface i just sprinkle them around. The instructions actually say to do something like five to 10 mites per plant. I'm not gonna count the mites out. There's 5,000 of them in here. That's, I just, I'm not gonna do it. But I'm going to sprinkle them around in areas where I'm noticing the spider mites. And then, like I said, I'll be doing that bi-weekly and turning the lights off. Turn this vermiculite, vermiculite substance here. Sprinkle that down into the areas where I'm noticing the spider mites on top of the foliage. I'll perhaps get some on top of the soil, probably some around the bases of the plants too, so they can crawl up the stems. You can also pour these into an envelope and make sure that the envelope's open. Tear the top off of it like a long letter envelope and stick it down into the nook of a plant. And just pretend these instructions here are an envelope. You can have that sprinkled in there and you can set it right in there and then they should crawl right up and out, and that way you can contain that vermiculite if you don't want it going all over the place. I'm just assuming this is vermiculite, whatever it is. It looks a lot like vermiculite. That way you don't have it on top of the plants and you can do things a little bit more cleanly if that's your preference. And then the ladybugs, same thing. Dusk, dawn, something like that. At night times, usually when I've done it, when I'm doing it outside or very, very, very early in the morning, making sure to go through the garden or through the plants and spray them down so there's a light layer of water on top of the plants. That gives them a chance to hydrate and let them know that they can settle and not have to scatter really quickly to go and have to find food or resources. It'll help get them to hang around if they aren't on an instant search for something very vital like water. Over here on this colocasia, this is where I have noticed the spider mites on this one right here as well as on this up here. They're not as bad as they were, and there's been some improvement just from spraying. This is a wet paper towel. I cannot, for the life of me, find a spray bottle laying around my house that doesn't smell like it's had peppermint oil in it from spraying. I use peppermint oil a lot to spray the plants down. I would recommend using an actual spray bottle. That makes the most sense because then everything can stick properly. It's a finer particle, but yeah, here we are. Doesn't really matter. This part's just for the video. You may notice the lights are on in here. It's because I'm filming a video. So this is as much as I'm going to do on camera. This is why the envelope method might be preferred. Maybe you don't want to look at junk sitting on your leaves like that. It's generally a couple days. Everything out here gets blasted with water. It's not a bad idea whenever you have a bug problem is to blast the plant first with some water, help get those things off of there. That'll knock the vermiculite off and really as things dry, can shake it off. So it's really not that big of a deal because I'm, <laughs> I'm in my garage. I don't really care if there's some vermiculite spilt around, but I can completely understand why you may not want that in your house. So try the envelope method if that's the case for you. And then for the ladybugs, is this, is this bothering anybody? I'll turn the lights off gently sprinkle them around and more than likely get some of that straw or that material that's in there out and spread that around the base of the plants and just let them go and do their thing. For right now, I'm just going to put them over here in the dark and because I already sprayed some water over in there, it's more deep inside the plants so they can have a drink. That's pretty much all there is to it. There are all different types of combinations of different things you can use for beneficials. Praying mantis are great. I don't want them in my house, but they work well alongside of 
ladybugs. They won't eat the ladybugs because ladybugs taste bad. They might like take a bite of one, but they probably won't go back for more once they learn their lesson. Ladybugs have an extreme appetite, so they'll go after most things, most soft-bodied insects. There's a type of ladybug for mealybugs that's quite a bit more expensive. These will usually get to mealybugs, but it's not generally their first choice. But if there's just a few, they'll usually help with that problem. This is more for aphids, but there are starting to be some signs of maybe some white fly and some other things, which there are other beneficials for. There's tons of different beneficials, but that's where this video stops because I only have the ladybugs and the predator mites. Just want to make sure that I've documented what I've done here for everybody else. Like I said, lights are going off as soon as I'm done filming this video for the benefit of the predators for the mites and of the ladybugs that way they can spread around more calmly set my timers back for a few hours before those turn back on and that's all there is to it repeat bi-weekly with the predator mites that depends on what kind of mite you're using with the blend it says bi-weekly so not next week but the week after i'll spread some more out and just keep doing that until i haven't seen any spider mites for a long time this is something to do right at the beginning of the problem once an infestation is set in I don't know if it's the route that I would recommend, especially if there's lots of webbing around, because you need to, I forgot to mention that, you need to knock the webbing. So if you have spider mites that are creating all those webs around everything, the webbing needs to be removed before releasing them too. I forgot to mention that. It's another reason to wipe the plants on. Not just to get soaps and oils and potential pesticides off the plants, but also to remove webbing so that the predator mites can roam more freely. Yeah. We good? Comment down below, what do you do for your insects in the house? I can understand why maybe you don't want ladybugs running around your house. Things like mites in the lace wings, not normally a problem to release them in your house. They don't normally go flying all over the place. Lace wings will, but they want to hang out on your plants. I don't want them in my house, so I can understand why that may not be everybody's cup of tea. Okay, I need to wrap this up because I need to get these guys spread out and turn the lights out. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And like I said, comment down below, tips, tricks, suggestions. This is a community. We can all learn and grow together with these sorts of things. And what did I forget? Because this was a very on the fly video. I wasn't expecting these to come quite yet. Thought I had more time to prepare for it. So instead I was just bringing everybody along for while I'm doing it to help alleviate the amount of questions I might have in the future. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye, bye.